Hey dude, it's time, new season, the homeboys. You ready? Let's do this. You ready? Man, we haven't cleaned up since last season. Man, this ain't gonna work. Mm -mm. Better. Hey everybody, you are kicking it with the Homeboys and the Homeboys Podcast. We are very excited to have you here. This is season two of the Homeboys Podcast, and we really, really appreciate all the feedback that we got from season one, all the fans that we have out there, all the people that have commented and said that we want more of the Homeboys, and we want to kick it with the Homeboys. (laughs) So we're very excited to be here. As always, I'm here with my delightful and very charming co-host, Dr. Adams. Mm-hmm. How are you, Scotty? I couldn't be better. How are you, my friend? I'm good. It's, it's exciting, right? All this encouragement we had from season one. It's awesome, man. Yeah. Got all dressed up. Right? And I don't for... think people understand how much we enjoy doing this. Like yeah. it's, you know, we're dealing with uh, with real estate investments, and we have over three thousand tenants, and all these people that we're, we're we're constantly, you know, in and out and developments and right. You know, this is our fun time. Right. This is where we get to, I don't know, just kind of unwind and share our experiences. Yeah. And we love real estate, so why don't we just get here and kick it? I There's nothing I look forward to more in our week than this. So all of the encouragement that we got um, from people reaching out and telling us that they enjoyed seeing it was awesome because it just gave us an excuse to come back for season two mm-hmm. and to uh, bring some some new info, some some new perspectives on everything, and we're just excited to be here. So, and life to, is good. Also, life's uh, good. Life's we've had good. lots of uh, life experiences since yeah. season one. What'd you do last night? Speaking of life experiences, we uh, we did some swim lessons with the girls, which have three and five year old girls. That's always a uh, you know just a a, a mess mm-hmm. you know, getting the girls in the swim you know, bathing suits and all that, and then. Uh, we went out last uh, night. I I have a tradition where I buy my girls Valentine's Day dresses every year, and then I cook dinner for them and my wife so on sweet. Valentine's Day. So then so we also sweet. did some shopping for for their mom, my wife, last night, which was exciting. And uh, yeah, we tore up the fashion mall in in, uh, in Indianapolis. Just last running night. Oh, ragged, just, just pulling clothes off shelves. And mayhem. It was funny. I was I was at uh, Janie and Jack. It's this this retailer for. Girls' clothing, okay. yeah. boys, little boys' clothing, and I, I lost um, Clara for a little bit, and I, I, I'm like looking around, and you know, like the the displays that have the clothes that go all the way around. I, I finally pan around, and I see just feet, you know, standing in the middle, of standing it. in the middle, just mm-hmm. just in there chilling. I can't blame her. <laughs> you know, just, seems like a cool place to be. You know, hanging out. Mm-hmm. But uh, but no, the kids are good. We did Disney, you know. Uh, Last month, and that was phenomenal, and just, you know, I, I feel like I've been trying to get ahead, Yeah, you know, <laughs> ever since. Yeah. Uh, but uh, your family's good. Your girls are Yeah, I'm an empty in, nester. It's crazy. College at Ball State. That's right. Ivy's a freshman now up there, and, and Lily's crushing it. She's uh, putting on community theater, doing really well. They're both doing great up there. My wife's doing well. She loves her little uh, boutique. Uh, She's giving back to the people too, man. It's is. awesome. Yeah. So every penny, you know, goes to um, a charity in need, and it's a neat place. And and uh, she's busy with it because it's growing, and people are really getting behind the idea of shopping at a place where the money makes a different in their, difference in their own community. So she's happy. I'm happy. Life is good. Business is crazy for us right now. Um, it's the busiest way. we've been yeah. in a very long time. We have uh, development. Um, you know, townhomes. We got a development in Southern Indiana with, um, you know, quite a few doors. We've got uh, one going up north of here, 144 doors. Right. Um, yeah, it's bananas. We just uh, agreed on f- uh, 58 acres that could hold, gosh, as many as you know. We're not going to put this many, but it could hold as many as 1,200 doors. Uh, a lot up going north. on. 
Lord's yeah. been good to us, my friend. Yeah, we've got a lot been of great. development and a lot of happy clients. You know, rents are up. So, you know, all our single family people out there who are invested in single family. We have a lot of clients that are listeners and we thank you all too. Yeah. Um, they're, they're in a good spot right now. They're in a now. very good spot. But, uh, but well, let's get to the topic of today. Sure. And we're talking about, you know, this bananas real estate market. Right. And when will it end? You know, yeah. what, what does the future hold? When is this crazy roller coaster? It's not a roller coaster ride. It's just, it's a, it's an elevator ride. It's just a one way, you know, ride right now. When, you know, what goes up must come down. When I, is this like going to change? You know, I like that you started with a very important word, when, not mm-hmm. if it's when, you know, real estate is cyclical. You and I have been through a few of those cycles at this point in our careers. Now we, we survived 2008, you know, bubble burst, and, and we've been through others since and before. Um, I think that's very important to, to, to mention because we have a lot of very young clients. We also talk to a lot of very young people, um, you know, uh, millennial generation, and they have not seen a great recession. Right. You know, I think it's hard for uh, some younger folks to understand that we went through a period where you could not sell your home. You know, it couldn't be done. Right. And it's hard to believe right now where things are, you know, we, there was a foreclosure. What, what were the numbers just, just, uh, we just missed out on? Yeah. 205 we offered, I think. On 180. So yeah. 180 list. We offered yeah. 205 cash, cash and got closes. blown out of the water. Yeah. We weren't even close. Correct. Yeah. You know, it's mind blowing. Like if yeah. you, if, you know, if, you, if you're comparing that to the great recession that we went through, I think a lot of younger, you know, people have a hard time understanding that, well, let's back up. Cause you and I came into real estate about the same time. Right. And we were part of a market that was going up, you know, as well. Right. I mean, you always thought that you had an exit strategy of being able to sell anything that you had. I right? absolutely did. I did too. I, I did too. Did. I was young and naive out of IU yeah. as you were. Right. And we thought, oh, this party's going to continue. Yeah. What happened? For sure. And it didn't, you know, it, it, it came to a screeching halt for, for everybody. You know, luckily you and I had a lot of uh, good years before it came to a screeching halt and we were able to adapt, overcome and, um, and, you know, made it through it, but it's, it changes the real, whatever the real estate market is right now, it's not going to be this in three years. I don't, I don't know if it'll be worse or better, you know, we're pessimists. So, um, you know, not to scare everyone away, but, you know, we've been through enough to be pessimistic, we plan on the worst and, you know, and, and we make a market work with that fear. So that way, worst case scenario, we're not going to be out of business. I'm not interested in, in risking at all over this stuff. And, and there's a lot of people out there who are getting started who think they have to risk it all and get started. And, and you just don't. Conser- a conservative approach is very important. You will miss out on some, some of the upside potential that the riskier people took, but when you see them all fall to the side mm-hmm. during the next pullback, you will be so grateful that you were conservative in your approach to real estate investing. So if I'm talking to you like I'm talking to my wife, so if I understand you correctly, you think it's wise for people to plan for the future not being so bright and fruitful? Yeah, right. I mean, you and I both, we, we both operate in that headspace all of the time. And, and I, so you're saying you're a fear monger. Yeah. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> so are you. I know I am. Yeah, I am. you are, you know, and so you think, well, how can two fear mongers own, you know, millions and millions of dollars worth of real estate and do developments and put all this stuff on the line if you're so scared? Well, we run numbers conservatively and we bake into the system the fact that we don't, ex- we know that it can go bad and you can still do it that way. Mm-hmm. Do we hit home runs because of it? No. We hit a lot of singles. Many more singles than home yeah. runs. But, you know, and, and what does that mean? I know those are just terms, mm-hmm. but what that means is we're not out there reaching for the stars trying to flip, you know, a $2 million house into a, uh, a $15 million house. Heck, there's a house on the market here in Indy. What is it, $12 million it's for 14, sale? 14 I believe. 14 million. I uh, believe it, it. they spent about $45 million to build it. Oh, it's it's... Bananas. Yeah, so in yeah. theory, there's $30 million in equity if someone were to buy it's that. straight out of Great Gatsby. Yeah, it's straight yeah. out of Great Gatsby. Mm-hmm. But but those aren't the kind of things that make you money. You don't stretch, and that's an extreme example. But there was another example of a, a house that we could have bought for under a million dollars that's uh, back in the day. You and I, did we ever go look at it? 
You're talking about the uh, their 116th yeah. Yeah. Meridian. Yeah, I didn't no, want to say I the didn't. name. I mean, you had to, you had to pay. You know, they were actually you having to pay like twenty five dollars to go to, right. to view it. Had a replica of Indiana University's That's basketball right. court indoor full. It was. Uh, you know, yeah, but the, I mean, in theory, that was a bargain. But it started at thirty-five million, went to thirty, went to twenty-five. It went to under two when we saw it last, right? Mm-hmm. It was under two. It was million. a large corporation that bought it as a corporate retreat, it's and neat. I'm not exactly sure what it sold for, but I know it was like under four, or yeah, under a, three, or something like it's that. It's a great corporate spot mm-hmm. back there. You know, my friends live right behind it, as you know, right. and so we we would sneak across the creek and go play right. at this. I mean barn that they have it's a neat corporate retreat but anyway you know it's about setting up a system and making it work that's what we believe real estate should be so if it's as simple as for for folks to go out and buy single family residential uh, properties you can still do it in a market like this you just have to be strategic on where you you buy because the win you know right now if you can buy a decent investment property jump on it we're lucky that we can provide six to seven a month, I think, right now is about what we're doing for our clients. We, we Used to be 20. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're real selective. So if you're selective and patient, you know, we can still find opportunities out there that are conservative, that still make great returns. And are they out do. There. You have to be very careful. I very mean, careful. It is, uh, you know, if you go back uh, five, six, seven, ten years ago, um, Really, you could have bought anything at about that time, and you know now it would have right. made sense. You so, know, what which, about? Sorry, no, uh, but I was just going to say we we never ever recommend going into you know bad areas. Yeah, um, you know, you which wanna, is most of what you see right now correct. out there for investors. Correct, it, and we won't touch it. Yeah, because there's not a, enough of the B plus to A plus level re, uh, investment properties, especially in the single family uh, niche. Right, you see people just grabbing up this junk now because that's all they can find. And there, it's better to not buy anything than to buy Correct. those. The term I use is polishing turds. Yes. Yeah. You're literally polishing a turd, they and are. you still have shit on your hands after you polish that turd. So it's it's I don't know location, location, location. That's another topic. Yeah. This real estate market is bonkers. So on this real estate market. Yeah. So what about you and I are pessimists? We we you know we're conservative in our buying, but what about the people out there who say? Well, you don't have to be as worried because there's a shortage of housing. So when there's a sh- shortage of supply and a high demand, we know what that chart looks like. Values go up. There is a lack of new inventory being built for uh, first-time home buyers, which is really that investment grade. Mm-hmm. That, that's the top tier of investment mm-hmm. grade single family. So we've got at least five to ten years of, of absorption that would have to happen before this market would, could pop. You just gave me what I call the information dump, you know, the data dump, right? Which I don't operate that way. I, I operate off gut feel. You're more of a did data your eyes geek. gloss over as I was correct. You're yeah. more of a data geek, right? I'm not. I go I go off of gut feel. You know, I look at what has transpired in the market. I see the houses, what they're going for in our area. I can't believe it. There's right. literally nothing on the market where our headquarters is at here. There's right. like nothing. There's you know. 400,000, a million, nothing. There's nothing on the market, you know, whatsoever. And these prices are just, you know, bananas. You know, I look at what's going on just in our economy in general. Um, just look how crazy everything is with cars and, mm-hmm. um, you know, shortages of everything. It's, um, it's just not normal. There's, there's, there's something coming. So for me, I look at... Our society is based on, you know, most of the the consumers within our nation, they're based on payment. Everything's based on payment. Right. It drives everything. Money is exceptionally cheap right now. And, you know, if you've been to any economics 101 class at any, you know, university, you know, the cost of money where it's at cannot stay there. The long-term ability of it staying where it's at is, is it, it can't happen. You know, we're already going through hyperinflation. Money's going to get more expensive. So, you know, if you, you know, say, for example, whenever your parents were buying a home, it was 17%. My, my, you know, my dad's first mortgage was 18%. 18%. And it was a VA, the best There you are. You best you get. get 18%. You know, so, I mean, think of where we're at today. I'm not saying it's going to that. But, you know, if you go up, let's just say it goes up two percentage points, what that looks like on a mortgage, you know, 
that's a ten thousand dollar difference on five hundred thousand dollars for for a year. I mean, that sinks a lot of people. Sure, you know, that sinks a lot of people. So as as those rates creep up, you know, that's uh, that's one way that you're going to see the market you know turn around slightly, and it has it has to go up and. You know, the, the other thing is I still think that there's so much uncertainty in the world and there's, uh, you know, if, whether it be, you know, COVID or, you know, whether it be foreign relations or anything else, you're always one event away from a major market shift. Right. You know? well, let, before we move on to that, I want to go back to that interest yeah. rate thing. So, so the interest rate is that you bring up a very interesting fact with that, that interest rates have to go up. And what will that do to a, a real estate market? It always throws a bucket of water on it. It's how cold, how cold of a bucket is that? Right. The other factor that that brings in, in that you, if you extrapolate this out further, which is people are able to go out and buy a $500,000 house right now because interest rates are low and because banks are doing some things that we disagree with, again, that we saw happening in 2008. Totally. They're over-lending. People are over-borrowing. Now, in two, before 2008, they were over-borrowing in the sense that they would buy six houses and you know not have good credit. Now people are, have good credit, and they're buying houses, so they think they're, be, they're safe. But no, mm -hmm. they're overspending. I got approved for a mortgage not long ago, and the amount blew my mind. They had no business offering me a mortgage at that amount. And I know that's true out there. So if you go to a mortgage. Are you rolling in Great Gatsby style? I, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I know. it's crazy. Yeah. So, but if, if for the normal person, they go to their mortgage broker and their mortgage broker says, here, you're approved for this. You think my wife, if I'm sitting in a meeting like that and the wife and, and the mortgage broker says, you can buy, say, $700,000 house. Do you think my wife's going to be interested in going looking at $300,000 houses in? No. You know, it's it's natural for people to then go, okay, we can afford seven hundred thousand. That's our price point. Let's go buy it. It's too much money. They're being approved for too much. So you're saying they said that it wouldn't happen again during the Great Recession, and now it's happening again. I see the beginnings of it, and mm -hmm. it's a little different because in, in they are stricter with credit, and they don't loan on as many houses, but they are over lending on on people's owner occupant first house and they're having to do it mm -hmm. because the market is demanding they do it because otherwise these people can't buy a house because there's not a house available for under 300,000 in a, where we live. They're, they don't exist. And that's in the middle American Indiana, much less on the yeah, coast. Yeah. So let's explain to people that are listening from the West coast. Cause we have lots of clients on the West coast right. and friends on the West coast and listeners on the West coast that 300,000 used to buy you anything you wanted here, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in any area of central Indiana right. in the nicest areas, you know, like, uh, say, you know, Carmel's a yeah. well healed neighborhood, you know, here, a nice modest home, mm -hmm. but in the best areas possible. And then right. you could even buy a new home here for that. Um, and it's gone and it's gone. That doesn't exist. Not even close. No. And the people that were still, were making the money to live in those $300,000 homes aren't making that much more, but now they're having to buy $700,000 houses. It's not a good thing. You know, I just can't imagine that that's where, where we're at, you know, and, um, you know, Lord's, you know, been good to us and, you know, it's, uh, I just can't imagine, you know, that, that being the, that's the normal thing now is for people to go out and buy, you know, seven, eight, nine hundred, a million dollar, you know, homes. I mean, heck, million dollar home, you know, whenever I first got into real estate, you know, 20 years ago, there was like 10, like on the market in all of the, the entire board of realtors. That's right. You know, now, I mean, there's nothing on the market now, but there are thousands of million dollar homes everywhere. Right. You know, it's just, it's amazing what has transpired over 20 years. You know, maybe we're just old fashioned and I'm fine with that. Yeah. You know, I, I Back hear people in my say day, that. that's the way it was that we liked right. it. Right. You know, I, I, I'm okay with the fact that prices have gone up a little. It's, it's not, that prices have gone up a little and and so people have shifted a little bit along with them. It's prices have gone up a lot, but people have shifted even more than that mm -hmm. in their comfort level at buying a house that should be considered above their means. And it's a problem. And we that could what what's gonna be the the straw that breaks the camel's back this time around? And will it be a soft landing? Will it be a big? We don't know, but there's going to be something at some point. And, you know, not to be fear mongers, because we still believe in, in investing in real estate. Mm -hmm. We just believe in doing it with your eyes wide open. You know, don't listen to these TikTokers out there, you know, who, who 
you know, the, you go buy a Lamborghini and everything's going to be great. Just go to, into it with your eyes wide open. And real estate is still a great investment, even in downtimes. In fact, you and I have made as much money during downtimes as we have during great well, times. Sadly, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want. To, I'm going to be cautious how I say this because I don't want anyone, you know, hurt um, from a downturn in real estate. But you know, from an investor standpoint. You know, downturns are good, right? You know, um, Warren Buffett's famous saying was what? When there's blood in the streets, buy, buy, buy. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's amazing to see what has happened with real estate. I mean, heck, half of my sphere of influence now, you know, my friends are in real estate in some capacity. I know. You know everyone's in real estate. Yeah. You know, I think that's another, another troubling, you know, sign that, uh, you know, it's just, it, once everything, if it's, this is a good one. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Right. And I've got a couple of uh, really good friends that happen to be a little younger than us, a generation or oh, earlier that are, you know, that are in real estate and, and quite frankly, doing very well as retail real estate agents, not very so much well. investors, but, very doing, but doing very well. Um, and we've got a couple that work for us um, that, you know, my advice to them is keep, hold it back. You know, don't right. spend it all. You know, be be tucking it away. Right. You know, because I we the the reason why I'm a fear monger about it is because I lived through two thousand seven, eight, nine, and ten. Right. You know, I, I I saw it. You know, I had years where I didn't take a check. Right. Um, I wasn't hurting because I had years that I did great and right. I wasn't in stupid investments, nor did I have to cash out or anything like that. You were but positioned well because positioned of your, well of your conservative nature. Correct. You know, so. I also I also watched money evaporate during the uh, you know that money that I'd saved and put in you know, brokerage accounts and you know it was gone, you know I don't want that to happen again either you know so so explain I, I'm sorry mm -hmm. so he's saying the same time the market crashed think about this for anyone who who wasn't invested at the time not only is your real estate suddenly worth a lot less but all of your capital reserves that you had that are in the market even in conservative uh, mutual funds. Or even bonds at that time, mm -hmm. um, you you lost half of it in many cases. So you've mm -hmm. lost the value in your home, all your capital to keep those houses going, and it can turn into a snowball quickly if you don't have enough capital reserves set aside because then you, you're not getting as much rents in. Uh, you still have deferred maintenance, and it can snowball, and then you run out of money, and then what do you do when you don't have capital reserves to make it through that tough time? However, if you had enough capital reserves, you just ride it out, and you just ride it out, and then when this... When the prices go up, you know, sell, sell, sell. You know, it's, there's ways to make it through it. Right. So I, I, I think it, it, it's, uh, it's beneficial to, for people to know, like, you know, why, you know, we are the way that we are. We've, we've went through these cycles, and I, right. I don't want to lose half of everything that, you know, I've worked so hard for. Right. But at the same time, I think real estate is a phenomenal investment tool. I think people... Um, should get in it, uh, that are passionate about it. I think that there's a lot of opportunity in it. People just have to be cautious. You know, it's not as easy as advertised out there to, right. to everyone else. You know? Well, I, I know you don't like the stats, but this one's simple, and I know you like it, which is over 90% of millionaires out there were made millionaires by real estate. Now, that doesn't mean that they became millionaires and then they bought real estate and invested in real estate. They became millionaires through owning real estate. It's a crazy statistic. Well, let's, you know, we, we believe in holding real estate. Right. You know, let's just go back uh, 10 years, and we have lots of clients that bought portfolios 10 years ago. You know, the values have almost doubled. Right. You we know, also have um, clients that have been with us since before the 2008. Mm -hmm. We still have some of those clients, of Correct. course, who have held through, and they're great. And they did fine through it. We saw them through. That's part of what uh, really built the reputation of the property management company that we that we built mm -hmm. here. It, it was based on that. So, you know, I think it's important for people to know who don't about your story there as you were helping friends and people you cared about flip houses in 2007 yeah. and the market crashed and you had 20 houses that you were in the middle of flipping for friends mm -hmm. and your own. And you said, well, we got to do something with them. Let's rent them out. Got a great through. example. I, my good friend, Patrick, um, he couldn't sell his house right. in the, in that time. And him and his wife needed to move. They were moving up to uh, northern Indiana at the time. And I said, man, you're going to have to dump your price because 
we, you can't sell a house right now. Right. Like, let's rent it out. We put we put a tenant in it, same tenant for for fourteen years, twelve years. Anyway, um, just sold his house, and it was it was a hundred thousand. He bought the house for one hundred five thousand dollars in like two thousand six or seven. Mm-hmm. We sold it for two sixty. Right. So he you he know, stayed the course. He had professionals have his back. He saw himself through that period, and he was positioned where he was able to hold the house, and that's important. And if someone had only put $100 down on their house and they lost their job and they didn't have capital reserves, they couldn't have done that. They couldn't have that storybook ending. Mm -hmm. They would have lost it during the downturn. So that's why we believe that you should be conservative in what you do, but also don't be totally scared of the downturns. We're fear mongers. We're scared of everything. But at True. the same time, we invest in, in a way, and we believe our clients invest in ways that allows them to see it through even those downturns. Mm-hmm. So we think real estate's a great investment, despite the fact that it's cyclical in nature and isn't all sunshine and rainbows. This, we try to take the suck out of real estate. You know, I used to get on stage and give mm-hmm. talks, and I would always say that. You know, our job is to take as much as the hard, suck man. out of it yeah. because it's, it's difficult, it's full of bumps. So, yeah, we don't see it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows forever, but if you do it right, it's going to be okay. Even if so that happens. To, to, kind of, to kind of bring everything back full circle, when does it stop? I guess we're both saying we don't know. Don't know. We just believe that it's coming, mm-hmm. and we believe that it's important to position yourself for that time. You know, what goes up must come down. Right. It sounds too good to be true. It probably is. You know, we sound really old, man. Yeah. Sound really old. Yeah, but, you know, we believe in long-term investing, and that's that the core of what we're saying. Plan on long-term investing. It's the way to build wealth, and it's the way to build riches, too, if that's important. We're more interested in the wealth that it builds and the generational income that it c- can provide to, to our families who we deeply care about and, you know, building a legacy. But And if you do look at it that way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're just holding it, and you make it through those, and you have reserves, and life is easy. Right. Why make it stressful? You know, why spend all your income on a, we saw a TikTok not long ago where, where they did the math on the TikTok and they had like 3,500 of gross income from that property and they went and bought, what was it? A f- it was a Porsche and a Range, Range Rover. And a Range Rover. Yeah. Lease. Right. You know. Leased them. You have an extra $3,500 where I mortgage. went and got a Porsche and Range Rover. Right. And, and also said, and I have $100 left over for gas. <laughs> Honest to God. You can't make it uh, up. Man. $100 for gas. Yeah. Well, not driving, very far, not driving very far in a Porsche and Range Rover on $100 for gas, <laughs> no, but uh, you're not. You, you got that every month, that 100 bucks for gas. But they look good Not to mention, they go. you know, that uh, the building that she was talking about, you know, probably had a $200,000 roof on it and, you yeah. know, anything, but whatever. But, uh, but anyhow, well, we're getting to the end of our time. We're not fear mongers. We're very happy-go-lucky people. You know, we enjoy hanging out and talking about real estate, but we do feel like it's important to educate our listeners, because we've had a combined 40 years of real estate experience and we have a lot, you know, uh, a lot of knowledge. We've had lots of mistakes. We like to safeguard our friends, family, and listeners against those mistakes, and we can do that. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows, as Mr. Adams said. It's, uh, it's a very great industry to be in, but you have to be very cautious. You have to be very, very careful. And, uh, you know, don't believe everything that you see out there on internet and social media because trust me it's not all true but uh, you've been kicking it with the homeboys today again we are very grateful to have you uh, on this new season of the homeboys podcast we thank you for listening we have new episodes every friday you can find us on any streaming service feel free to drop us a line sometime but check us out next time until then happy investing